Here we are at Lausville Cops and we're going to do a bit of tree ID, which is trickier at this time of year than most other times of year because we've got no leaves. Although we have got leaves on the ground, which can be helpful. In the winter we have to tend to go by things like bark, buds, the shape of the tree overall, what's known as its habit. Um, so some trees are sort of columnar, some trees are conical, some trees are spreaders like oaks. This tree here is a silver birch and that's pretty easy to spot in winter because of the bark. It's a very common tree, it's one of the first three trees to come back to the country after the Ice Age. Its scientific name is the Betula pendula. The pendula bit's rather useful because it kind of describes the, the drooping of the branches. Another way we can identify this tree is we've got catkins on it. Basically they're like flowers, they're the flowery parts of the plant producing pollen. Seeds often stay on the trees over winter, so that makes it quite an easy spot as well. That is a birch leaf, that shape, quite identifiable, uh, usually green, um, just not now. Okay, uh, all right, well we're going to walk up these magnificent steps that we built over the past few months um, and uh, see some more trees. Okay. This is an easy one. Everyone should be able to get this. This is holly. It's got a rather pretty scientific name, Ilex aquifolia. As you can see, it's uh, the spiky leaves. The leaves actually, on big trees, often get quite smooth edges higher up. It's thought that it just prevents it being eaten by deer and so forth. Well, this is a yew tree. Taxus baccata. We kind of associate it with churchyards because of its incredible long life. It was venerated in pre-Christian times. Um, in fact, in quite a few churchyards that I know of, the, uh, the yew trees in the churchyard are older than the church itself. That's how old they are. They go on for thousands of years. It's, uh, it's widely naturally occurring, native. This is the only example I know of around here. So, uh, very welcome. Evergreen. So a bit of constant colour there for the winter months. And like holly, they actually do have male and female trees, different trees. Um, so the ones with the berries on are female, effectively. At least they're the female reproductive parts of the tree. So you won't see berries on all holly trees or all yew trees. Wow, it's a chestnut, Castanea sativa, brought in by the Romans, first century AD. Bit of a favourite of mine, this particular tree. About 30 years ago it got decapitated by lightning, which is why you can see you've got mature bark, quite ridged, with a slight twist and then quite suddenly the bark is absolutely smooth. So that's more recent growth but you can see the change in the texture of the bark. And it's still growing. It takes quite a lot to kill a tree. Some nice examples of cherry trees here. This is not the best example, but it's the one that we just come up against. This is a cherry tree. Um, and I can tell that not because of the leaves, because it hasn't got any leaves. Well, there are a few. It hasn't got cherries and it hasn't got blossom, which it does in the spring. But it's got this amazing bark. These, um, these, these lines here, which make it a very easy winter spot. People are often surprised by when they point out a cherry tree. When you think about cherry trees, you think about orchards and a tree maybe four or five metres high, something ornamental and pretty. Whereas this is by far from the biggest one I've seen. Sometimes you see cherry trees in parks. It's like a huge dome of dense blossom. It's not quite like that, but it is quite impressive to see a tree this tall 
with a, with a degree of blossom across the top of it. Ah! <laughs> Rhododendron, non-native, rather invasive. I didn't know it was here. There are other woods where it's just got loads of the stuff. Um, so uh, <laughs> we should probably get rid of it. It's evergreen and it just shades everything else out when it gets really, really big and it just takes over. So there are certain sites we work at where we've been um, removing it just to let other things grow in their place. It's what you might call a, sort of a garden SKP. Um, a bit like um, laurel is another one. There are other shrubs we might bump into. You go, what on earth is that doing here? That belongs in a garden. And it's often, yes, a bird has just eaten the berries or whatever it produces and flown off. And Still got some leaves on this one. So I can still see what it is. Here's the leaf. This is a sycamore. Acer pseudoplatinus, and um, everyone looks at it and goes, well, that's a maple. It is a maple. Acer is the maple genus. It's not an easy tree to identify without leaves. Well, the barks on this example is fairly nondescript. On really large examples, you get quite a nice sort of platelet effect. There you go, sycamore. Non-native, but uh, very, very common. Naturalised, as they say. This is field maple, still got some leaves on it. Our only native maple, a relative youngster, but you can clearly see not quite as flashy as the sort of ornamental maples you get, but it's our only native, so we like it. <laughs> 